Now, just in case you didn't see the previous video, this machine here came with 48 gigabytes of RAM. One of the sticks of RAM was bad, so I contacted the seller. I got this off, this off of eBay, and they sent me a replacement stick. Now, if you know anything about dual CPU systems, they have to be symmetrical. So the RAM has to be identical on each CPU setup. So if one stick of RAM goes bad, you won't be able to use another stick of RAM. So instead of four gigabytes being lost, I lost eight gigabytes. Fortunately, that other stick is still usable. So I'm going to be able to, once I put this back in, I can put the other stick in that I removed and everything will be back up to normal. As I mentioned in the previous video, at 40 gigs as it's running right now, 40 gigabytes of RAM, I really am not maxing out the system and 48 gigs, I probably may never max that out, but since it is a new system to me, I wanted to make sure that everything was up to speed the way it was sold to me. Here's the good stick of RAM that I took out of the system, and here is the replacement stick. So what we're gonna do is we're going to install these first. So let's get this case open. Now, this is a full-sized tower here. So it's quite large and quite heavy. So hopefully I can get the right camera angles in this video here. It measures probably, I would say, anywhere from 26 to 28 inches in height. So it is pretty large. Now, these cases here are pretty sturdy. And to open it up, we're gonna have to push this latch out and then drop this down. What I want to do is I want to access the RAM here and behind this shield here. There's six slots here and six slots behind this shielding here. And the shielding is basically here for airflow. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to pull this tray out and also pull this cooling unit off because this is meant to cool the RAM. And I'm going to have to pull this shield off here. So I'm just going to push this tab in and push this up and I probably should have pulled the tray out a little bit more. And there we go. That's all I really need to do to expose the RAM module that, or the RAM slot there that I need. The next step is to get the shielding off here. And there we go. These are built to be tough, but just make sure if you do have a unit like this that you don't break anything. I didn't break anything, but it is meant to snap off there. So here is the other set of RAM back here that you can see, and there's an open slot there as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the stick of RAM that I know to be good which was the original one that was in the system. I'm gonna put that back here. And the reason I'm gonna put it back there is because it's not hard to access, but it's of the two sections, it's the more difficult to access. So I'm just gonna slide that in. I wanna make sure that I do this correctly. Not the best angling here in this situation, but I think I'll be able to get it in without issue here. All right, there, I got it into the slot. And now I'm just going to push it down until it snaps in. There we go. So here's the replacement dim. And it is also a 4 gigabyte stick, Samsung branded. And I got to stick that in this sled down here. I just want to snap it into place. There we go. So that gives you a better view there. I don't know if you saw it when I actually snapped it in, but it was the second dim here and it fits in there nicely. So the next thing to do is to put the shielding piece back in and it's pretty easy to snap in. Now there's a place up here for a cord, just a, a channel for a cord and that's this cord back here. So I just wanna make sure that that's up. Push this in. Keep the cord up and then just snap it into place. Now, this board fits into the motherboard and the way that it is accomplished, you really can't see much. Maybe you can see it on that end. There's a white right there 
there's a white connector on the motherboard and there's an identical one back down here which you probably can't see you might be able to see a little bit of it there and that's how this board connects into the motherboard and all you have to do is slide it back until it won't slide anymore now it's not connected yet what you need to do to connect it and the way it's accomplished so you don't bend any pins is you just push this handle up and it pushes this board into the motherboard and everything is connected again. So the RAM is fixed. So the next project we're going to do for this upgrade involves the disk bays up here. Now, you might notice I have a loose SSD here and then I have a hard disk here. This hard disk is temporary. It's only an 80 gig hard disk drive and I'm going to replace it with my 1.5 terabyte drive that I have in my other build but there's some things that have to happen uh, before I can actually pull that drive to put it into here because I'm going to be also upgrading that other system and consolidating from a third system. So we can get into that in a future video. Now also I have two drive bays here. We're gonna fill up one of them with another SSD. Now if you saw the unboxing video, you saw that I have these little caddies, these 2.5 inch caddies for these 1.8 inch drives, SATA drives, again, all SSDs. So what I wanna do is I wanna take this Intel drive, again, it's a three gigabits per second drive, so it'll function you know, at the fastest speed with the setup already in this computer, and I wanna put it in this caddy here, and that way I'll be able to have the full size SATA connectors here, as it stands right now. The connectors are different, as you can see there, so the first thing I want to do in this process is open this up and reveal the inside of this. Now this is very simple. All I need to do is take this drive and match it up, which should be this way. Plug it into the adapter here. Very simple. Take the cap, put it on here. And then what I need to do is tighten it down. Now that's accomplished with these tiny, 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 tiny screws. So, I mount them in here. Believe it or not, it actually comes with its own screwdriver, this little kit here. So let me mount the screws in here, or at least start them up. So everything's nice and snug, not crazy tight, but nice and snug. And it is actually the same size now as my other SSD. I'm going to put it in the lower bay and I'm going to attach the data connector here. It's come to my attention that I only have two SATA cords in this build. So I'm going to have to use my trusty cords that I purchased off of Amazon, which are actually monoprice cords. And I'm just going to need one of them. So here we go, blue, almost a perfect match, not quite, but almost. And these actually lock in. They have the, uh, the clip on there. So let me plug it into one of the ports here. Okay, so I kind of tucked the cord into one of the drive bays up front here, and I tucked it behind the power cord. There's a clip here right on the, the uh, case itself. So I'll put it in there and let's actually plug it in first to the data connector on the drive and then close this up. So there we go. So the graphics card I have in here currently is an NVIDIA Quadro. And if you know anything about the Quadros, they go for a lot of money, but this one is a very old one. So I'm going to be upgrading it to a GTX, 580. So in order to access the graphics card, I'm just going to have to pull out this piece here. And as you can see, here's the graphics card here. Now as you can see on the back here, you have these blue tabs here. And that's how these expansion cards snap in here. Okay, there we go. I pushed the tab in and pushed it out. And that allows me to pull the card out of the motherboard. And this should pop right out here.
There we go. Quadro FX580 right here. Again, this is an older card. I'm going to be replacing it with a much larger card, a consumer grade card. As you can see the difference in size there. Now I'm going to be placing this card in the same slot that the Quadro came out of. The only thing is, is that it, this is a double wide card, so I'm going to have to allot for that on the back. So let me do that first. Again, I'm just going to push this tab in and push it out. There we go. And then this piece, there we go, can pull out here. I'm glad I didn't drop it into the system. I'm trying to reach across the camera here and it's kind of difficult sometimes. But that's a piece that comes out there and it allots for the double wide card. So what I need to do is I need to take the card and just slide it into this blue slot here, which you really can't see. You can just see a little bit of it but you will see, because the card is very large, you will see how everything fits together here. So, just press into place here. There we go. The way this card is constructed, it has the fan intake on the top, and then there's the entire card is covered, so it pushes the heat out the back. So the next thing I need to do over here is just bring these guys back in to lock this down into place. There we go. Same thing here. Hopefully you can see it. I'm actually pushing from the back. It makes it a little bit easier. And now the card is held into place. So up here off camera you can't see it, but I'm going to have to use some of the power connectors that come from the... You can see a little bit there that come from the power supply. What I'm going to do, it has a nice little tie here that I'm going to release. Put that to the side because I'm going to reuse it. And I need two connectors. I need these two guys right here. The other ones I will bundle up again. So you have two power connectors here. One is a six and one is an eight. So let's get the eight in there first. There we go, pretty easy. And let me get, then let's get the six in there. So there we go. So this graphics card is ready to go, other than the fact that I will need to also put the drivers in for it. But let me work on this cable management here real quick. So the cords are pretty much out of the way. Airflow looks like it's gonna be good. The graphics card is in place here. I don't know if you can see that there, but there you go. And as you can see on the top there, there's that turbine air intake, which will blow air out the back of the card and out the back of the case, actually. So that pretty much does it for all the upgrades. The next thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put this piece back in. And let's see if it actually fits, because the graphics card is quite large compared to what was in there before. And yeah, looks like it fits perfectly. So everything is up and running and working perfectly. I have the graphics card and all the drivers running properly on there. So here you have the system information here, and I just wanted to show you that the 48 gigabytes of RAM are perfectly installed, perfectly working, and being recognized by Windows 10 here. And you'll also notice that there are two Xeon processors in this machine, each clocked at 3.33 gigahertz. Next up here, you'll see the drives that are installed on this computer. Of course, drive C is the main drive, and that's the 128 gigabyte SSD. And then the Intel drive is the Intel SSD, the 160 gigabyte SSD that you saw me install in this video. So finally, let's take a look at a screen grab that I got from my GeForce experience. And you can see that I'm running the GeForce GTX 580, which we installed in this video. Of course, it goes over my CPU again and my RAM installation. 
You can see that the current resolution is 2560 by 1600. That's my Dell 30 inch monitor. So, so far a real successful upgrade to this machine but there's more coming down the line, so stay tuned. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. If you like what you see, please subscribe. And as always, if you wanna help out my channel, give me a thumbs up, favorite this video, share this video, or you can actually join my Patreon. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.